Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and I'll be playing the final place today on Lee Chess. And I'll try to be instructive as much as possible. We've got the black pieces here. Open starts with d4, so c6, d5, Karo Khan defense. He plays e4 and that's just the Karo Khan advanced variation because he advanced the pawn rather than exchanging it. And now I like to bring back my bishop on g6. The idea is to open up the h-file after he takes. If he doesn't, then just follow up with a normal development. Strengthening the center. Knight can be developed. On e7. And now knight to f5. He takes the knight. We'll take back with the bishop. Maintaining the pawn structure and now knight to d7. Now let's try to break the center by moving c5. Uh, he doesn't open it up. Uh, can I or I should not? Let's wait. Let's bring back the rook to c8. And now he's also got it. So I'll just close the c file not letting him open the structure making sure that the queen side is not being opened up any time of the game good square for the bishop can be uh, d3 here planting the bishop there so that no movement can happen but let's wait let's tell up the dark square bishop first and now we can uh, proceed with the idea. Probably now we can get the knight here and try to make it active. Even if he opens up, we are okay. We can take back. So let's attack the bishop, the dark square bishop. Uh, can exchange the knights or I can give the bishop. He has got two knights, so I think I should take out one of the knights from the game. And that will lead to a bishop pair with me. Always handy. Oh, he doesn't take. Here I can take the pawn. Keeping the structure closed. Now he cannot give me a check direct. If from the a4. That's why he first captures, I take back and now he'll give a check from a4 to this queen. Yes, he does. Trying to spoil the castling, which I'm pretty much okay with. I have to just find a good square for the king. Let's get it on f8. g8 is also available just in case he gives another check. He's trying to attack the dark square bishop, so moving the bishop, attacking the rook for now. And he advances his pawns further. Not a good idea always. Uh, let's bring back the bishop. I don't want to get stuck after he moves the pawn forward. Oh, he couldn't have actually. I missed it. It's okay. We'll just push the pawn, trying to open up the king side now, getting ready for the attack. Let's take. He takes back. Simply moving the g6. The idea is if he tries to attack on the f7, the bishop can come and defend it. So first moving the king away. Yep, he's building onto that. And since we know it, we can be pretty okay with it. Just get the queen into the picture. Planning to move it to b2. The bishop 
is going to come on the E4 controlling the diagonal and the queen will attack. So that's how I'm building onto the attack. Let's see how it goes. Okay, he is attacking the bishop, so I have to move the bishop first. Makes sense. The bishop is the main uh, trouble thing for him in this game so far. And also he has left the edge pawn hanging. Let's see if he saves it. Couple of ideas in the game now. Queen is going here. Can get the rook. And then align my pieces and then go for the checkmate. Okay, so he's not letting me capture, but has he given, oh, I can take on, is this some trap? I don't think so, I don't know. Let's take the rook. He takes my bishop. If he takes, I cannot take back if my queen is not here. So I have to first defend this. Somehow, oh, that's a check coming from here as well. Shall I just get the rook? What should I do here? A bit tricky. Let's move the king. That, that makes more sense. I don't think there's a fall up from here now. Yeah, at max he could have come here. Let's go for the kill. Threatening rook. Attacking here, but the knight is a defender. So I have to move the knight from here in order to accomplish this attack properly. Close game. He'll be trying to save the rook for now. The king looks pretty safe to me. Of course, now I can go for the capture. Let's just save the bishop for now. Maintaining sure that it's an attack constantly. Threatening him, checkmate. He saves the bishop, but how much? Let's take the pawn. Threatening to capture the pawn, as was the bishop. And he misses out on the bishop. So check. And he resigns. So that's how you build on to an attack. Uh, constantly focus on the key areas. Not necessarily that you have to attack from the king side only, but you can attack from the queen side as we did in this game, creating some pressure and then attacking in the proper way. Let's analyze the game once, uh, as always. I think the game was pretty much in control throughout. He started off with d4, queen spawn opening. I played c6 here. And as a standard rule, if you get space in the center, always go for it. He went for e4. And I played d5, the Karukan defense, and he advances the pawn. So the Karukan defense advanced variation. And now bishop to f5, standard development move. He gets the other bishop, which I don't like to capture, and bring back on g6. The idea is if he captures, my h file gets opened up for the attack, which is always helpful. So here he develops the knight on f3. I block uh, the pawn by from moving forward by moving Pawn to e6, strengthening my center as well. He develops c3, uh, making sure there's some queen move happening in the future maybe. And from there, sorry, if queen comes on b3, there's always a threat of 
capturing on B7. And that's what the plan uh, generally from white is if you are playing such a set setup, which is resembles a the London a bit because you have tried to create the pyramid, but not completely. He develops the dark square bishop now on f4. So knight on f5, he takes the knight. I take back with the bishop. And here he develops the other knight on d2. I get the knight on d7. Black looks in control as per the computer. Uh, a slight advantage in favor of black so far. He castles to safety. And here I try to break uh, the c file open. The But he since he... Uh, moved his rook on the center file I had to first uh, probably make sure that I have a defender as well on the c bond just in case he doesn't take now I'm ready to take and open up the c file and here uh, sorry my trackpad is giving me a hard time today uh, and then he also gets the rook on the c file so no point opening up the c file rather just close it so that's what I did here moving the pawn to c4 uh, it's a close situation. Uh, the bishop is pretty much useless. Uh, the knight here is also pretty much helpless, cannot come here. Uh, the squares are mostly guarded by his own pieces or my pawns are pretty much solid over there. So he moves h3. I respond with b5, trying to make sure that just in case he tries to open up uh, again. He tries to open up by moving the pawn to b3. There's, uh, there's a control, so I just moved the pawn. He tries to attack my bishop, and I plant it on uh, d3. Good square for the bishop, uh, controlling everything there on the king side, restricting his queen movement as well. And now knight to f8 with the idea of yep, uh, jumping on uh, the g6. Here he tries to break the pawn chain. Uh, of course, if he takes, we can take back with the b pawn, so nothing to be bothered about. So knight to g6, attacking the bishop. Oh, here I had a good move by, of moving the bishop to uh, a3, which I missed. Rather, tried to exchange the knights. He captures the pawn. I take back, maintaining the pawn structure. And then uh, he exchanges the knight. So I took it. Now, computer suggesting you can easily take on, exchange the queen and pr proceed from here because the structure is pretty much in control of the black as you can see the rooks are helpless they can't come on the open file because of the bishop uh, they can't even come on the f file again the light square bishop controlling both the diagonals and it's, it will be very tough to uh, dislocate this bishop from here he brings his queen to a4 and i just move the king to f8 now he's trying to exchange the dark square bishop could have let that happen but i moved to g5 did want an exchange to happen when you're attacking, don't go for exchanges, standard rule. So now bishop to e7, uh, here he tried to gain some space on the king side, but that uh, eventually helped me by moving h6. Now he cannot capture that, that will open up the h file. So I open up the h file, he takes back uh, with the f pawn, f4 to f5. The idea being that he can get his rooks aligned on the f file and attack the f7, uh, which never actually happened in the game. So I just developed the pawn to g6. He's trying to line his rooks. Uh, so I, I sense that uh, attack can be on the way. So moving the king away on g7. Here he tries to line the rook on uh, f3. Of course, I can directly pin it. But the idea was to first control the open file and then from there on attack the rook and the knight. Here he tries to attack the bishop. Of course, bishop. Uh, if removed from there it's a lot of disadvantage to me so pinning the rook again now attacking the rook and here he moves his queen to grab the bishop instead he was feeling helpless he wanted my bishop to just move from there and so i took the rook and he takes the bishop and here okay i could have directly gone with the attack but uh, i was just a bit worried about the discoveries suppose i move the queen I was threatened by the fact that A, he can capture like this in giving a check uh, and I don't want to calculate the continuation from here. That was first threat. Second was, of course, queen to uh, f6. Then I have to again move my pieces. Uh, there can be still some discover attack. I don't know. Uh, didn't want to get into all this. So 
I just thought of first moving the king uh, to safety, which was g8. There's no attack happening now. And now he, after he moves his queen to uh, f6, now I go for the kill, um, the queen to b2. Now he's trying to attack uh, the bishop. Uh, I defended the bishop, though I could have taken the pawn that was threatening mate. I missed that part. And he moves the bishop. I take on the pawn. And here he uh, blunders his piece. So I just take on the bishop. And he resigns. So a good game in control of the, of, uh, the dark side. Uh, completely, I believe. I'll just do a quick computer analysis as well. And see what kind of an accuracy or average centipole loss was there in the game. I hope you like the video. Uh, the main uh, logic behind attacking here was always making sure the king is safe first of all, not directly opening up the king side to attack but attacking from the queen side and eventually uh, hitting on the opponent from different directions. Uh, the bishop controlled a lot of stuff so yes bishops are always important. And there was one more calculation that I did in the game that uh, when I had an, a chance to probably exchange my dark square bishop with the knight, I preferred exchanging uh, the knight over there. Um, I just tried to get back on that part if I can. So the idea was that bishop pair is always important. Uh, so I exchanged the bishop there. Yep, I exchanged. So I could have moved my uh, dark square bishop here and he would have taken with the knight. And in this case, uh, I will be left with bishop and knight and so will he be. But the idea was uh, always to have the bishop pair rather than different pieces. Um, so having pairs help uh, in attacking. Uh, so yeah, some blunders there, yeah, but completely in control of the game throughout in the, in the black favor. So I hope you like the video. Please do let me know in your comments and try the Karokan defense if you haven't yet. Um, it's pretty solid for black and generally you won't uh, give away some material in the opening at least and try to build it on from there a solid defense for black thanks for watching and your time take care bye bye